Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel, and thanks for logging on. Today we're discussing the Grand Seiko Spring Drive GMT SBGE001 in stainless steel. You can see and you can purchase this dual-time sapphire bezel spring drive GMT on our website. Subscribe to our YouTube channel if you enjoy these videos, and please click on the card in the upper right-hand corner of the screen at any time during this video to see our full sales listing for this watch, with additional accessories included in the sale, high-resolution images for your desktop, and naturally complete pricing details for this SBGE001 Spring Drive GMT. The watch on my wrist represents a remarkably wearable 44 millimeter steel timepiece. Normally, 44 would spur associations with the likes of Hublot or Audemars Piguet or even something like a Rolex Deep Sea or Yachtmaster 2. This watch is more wearable than all of those. If I had to guess, I'd say it's a 42 or a 41. The 44 measurement is across the bezel. The case is more compact. It's also a relatively slim watch. At only 14.7 millimeters thick, it's actually thinner than it looks. The sheer side deceives. So you can easily fit this watch underneath a dress cuff, possibly more than just the suit jacket, but the sleeve beneath. The watch has a relatively compact lug-to-lug -lug dimension. It is, if you were to wear it on a strap, and note the presence of holes for your strap tool right here, adventurers, uh, the watch has a 50.6 millimeter lug-to-lug -lug dimension. Now, if you were to measure from the solid end link of the bracelet to its opposite number, that does extend it to a still reasonable 52.6 millimeters. My wrist, again, for reference, you're looking at a 16 centimeter circumference oval profile wrist. I believe you could wear this watch on the bracelet on a wrist as small as 14 and a half centimeters and on the strap if you were to throw it on a strap. It doesn't come with one but if you were to throw it on one I would say 14 centimeters circumference is doable with security and panache. The case is nicely shaped. It works well with the form of a wrist so that if you're borderline to wear it not just the lugs themselves, but the end links of the bracelet turn down dramatically. It almost appears like it's draped over the wrist because of the shape of the lugs and the end links, so it's not going to flare out dramatically on the edges of your wrist so much as it melts down on each side. It's a handsome look and one that doesn't just fit well, but looks good on a smaller wrist. The bracelet is nicely made. As you can see, there's a hairline bevel along the flank that is hand finished. It's not the flank. The flank is polished, and the, the tops on the shoulders are satin, but there is a rounded transitional polish between them that is very impressive aesthetically. I expect that on Audemars Piguet. I no longer expect that on Rolex. There is human interaction in evidence here, and I love that. The choice of link size means it, it's very silky and smooth and comfortable. The individual links are probably shorter lengthwise along the bracelet than you'll find on links of three-link bracelets from Rolex such as the Oyster or three-link Omega Seamaster bracelets. So by making the links a little bit smaller but keeping the three-link style, it looks just as sporty but it's more comfortable because the smaller links create a silkier feel. Now in terms of silky feel, the underside of the bracelet compounds that. Broad gaps allow for aeration of the wrist on a hot day, but you'll also note that there's a radius edge to each link where it faces another link, and this prevents a pincer from forming, so it avoids pinching skin or pulling hair. And you'll note no expense spared. All of the links, the removable links, as well as the removable half links, are sized with screwdrivers. The clasp is impressive, fairly minimalist though, as you'll note, the watch features a Grand Seiko script. Low in profile, it's not a dive clasp, I appreciate that, we don't all need an oyster style clasp, so keeping it lower in profile so that it doesn't disfigure your desk and your desk doesn't disfigure your clasp is a good idea. Twin trigger release means that this large and substantial sports watch cannot simply pop open, and it's also more expensive and upscale way of ensuring that closure security than, for instance, a clamshell. Moving back to the case, you can see that it's handsomely finished. Again, hand finishing, human involvement. The Zeratsu optically smooth polish of the case flank is intact. The watch has not been refinished in any way, so what you're looking at is the factory finish, as executed by hand directly against the milling machine. More a matter of feel than industrial procedure. Zeratsu finishing is an old Japanese tradition that was not born in the watch industry, but has adapted nicely to it. You'll also note that the transitional bevels and curves of the case defy the kind of mass production that you see from Omega and Rolex and even Breitling. We used to see this kind of transitional shouldering on Rolex lugs, but 
that tradition died out long ago. So a hand finished case, a watchmaker assembled and regulated movement, so handmade inside and out. But what about the business end of the watch, the bezel and the dial? Well, you can see that the bezel is bi-directional. It's a GMT bezel. So you have the ability to move it in both directions so that temporarily, assuming you set that 24 hour hand to Greenwich Mean Time, you can then offset per the local airport GMT offset of your destination to temporarily find three times. The one calculated with the bezel, GMT indicated by the hour hand, the 24 hour hand, and then the local time at center. The nice thing about this bezel is that it's very handsome and being black to match the dial base, it visually extends the watch so it looks larger than it is. It has an impressive presence without actually being overbearing in size. Now you'll note that the Ray Hot is smartly fixed in an almost vertical position so that when viewed head on, you barely see it. It doesn't clutter the dial. But you can see there is a 24 hour scale that slopes down from the bezel to the dial base. Grand Seiko dials are a huge highlight. Let me just mention one more time that like the Blancpain 50 Fathoms, the bezel here has a sapphire cap and it does have luminescence. So this is not an anodized or ADLC or lacquered bezel. This is a sapphire capped bezel that will retain a handsome appearance just as the crystal itself in sapphire will over long term. But back to the dials. Grand Seiko dials are wonderful. This one is simple and matte finished in black to avoid glare, but the hands and the indices are beautifully made. Diamond polished, they feature facets, so they're almost like little metallic gems, the way they react to light. They feature both satin and polished facets, so not only is there nuance to the finish, but there's, there's nuance to the form and the finish. They're beautifully laid down, and they contrast immensely with the dial base for easy legibility. Now, there are a few subsidiary features here. I'm going to screw out the crown, for it is a screw down crown. Let me just show you the case back real quick. Sometimes I get complaints when I don't show case backs of solid case back watches, but as you can see, Grand Seiko line and some information about the timepiece, including water resistance, which is 20 bar or 200 meters. Back to the dial side. Okay, we'll talk about the movement in a moment, but let's just see how some of the functions of the movement play out. Now I've screwed the crown out, it's no longer fixed. I can wind the watch and you'll see the power reserve scale at eight o'clock, advancing through the full end of its scale, the white is good, and it is a 72 hour power reserve, you can wind it manually and actually has a nice winding feel to it, unusual for a hybrid movement that is automatic, but fully wound 72 hour power reserve, there's a discrete date window at 4 o'clock, it actually supplants the 4 o'clock index. Grand Seiko went for high contrast, so black on white, so you can't possibly miss it. Now, of course, you can hack or stop the movement. It's a 9R66 Grand Seiko spring drive. Now I adjust everything. Everything moves in sync hours, minutes, 24 hours. There's an intermediate position that allows me to use a time zone function. You'll note the watch is ticking. The watch is keeping time, and I am changing my local time zone. You can use that to drive the watch forward or backwards as you jump time zones across the international date line. The date is bi-directional via the quick set system for the local hour. There is no hazard there. There's no danger to setting that date backwards. Also important to note, the location of the crown. Now, popping the watch open, putting it on my wrist one more time, the missing ergonomic discussion from my opening was that there are no crown guards, and the crown itself, when screwed down, is fully recessed within the flank of the case, which means if your wrist is more padded than mine, you don't have to worry about having a large crown and crown guard assembly dig into your wrist. Again, some wrists that are a little bit more generous in profile can have that issue. Not with this watch, you certainly won't. The timepiece also features immense mechanical refinement on the inside. A spring drive caliber 9R66, which is the, the time and power reserve and date 9R65 with the addition of the 24 hour hand. The watch has the three day power reserve. It has the accuracy of plus or minus 15 seconds per month thanks to the spring drive system, which combines a completely mechanical drivetrain and power source assembled and regulated by a watchmaker with a regulation wheel that creates its own current to activate a quartz oscillator. There is no battery in the watch. It creates that current from the spring energy. The regulating wheel then uses magnetic forces and cues from the quartz oscillator, which is again activated by the spring energy, to slow or accelerate that regulating wheel which turns in only one direction and smoothly with no stops. That's why the spring drive hand moves continuously. It's not high beat, it's no beat. It's a perfectly smooth sweep and one of those sites that is just redolent of Seiko and Grand Seiko technical prowess. 
30 joules, and once again, handmade, hand regulated, and hand serviced by watchmakers. This is a real luxury timepiece inside and out with technology that no one else has. Despite Piaget's attempts to replicate this technology, we haven't seen anything in meaningful series from them. So, Switzerland, nice try, but Seiko still rules this particular wavelength. A phenomenal watch, aesthetically, ergonomically, and technically. You can see and you can own the ultimate watch nerd's choice, the Grand Seiko Spring drive GMT SBGE001, 200 meters water resistant, eminently desirable, beautifully executed on our website. Grand Seiko SBGE001 spring drive GMT with that beautiful full sapphire capped and luminescent bidirectional GMT bezel. It looks sensational in the day with its sapphire cap, its black dial and its shock of red about the GMT hand, but this is a practical timepiece designed to be spectacular and a spectacle in the truest sense, day or night. See it and own it on our website.